live from Lenexa. Welcome to the Community Youth Live pre-show. We are so happy you all are here. You know, there's been a lot of hubbub over James 4, 8, which of course says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And so I went online and I found a great video that will just give you some laughs as we wait for a Community Youth Live to start. So without further ado, check out Cool Carl and wash your hands, you sinners. Morning, Carl. Andy, thought you were working from home today. Nope, I've got to get some stuff done. Oh, I just thought all non-essential personnel were working from home. Ouch, well, that seems a little harsh. What are you doing, by the way? I'm prepping. Prepping for what? The virus, you fool. It's spreading more than ever. Okay, okay, well, just calm down. They told us not to panic. Not to panic? That's exactly what they say when you're supposed to panic. I don't think that's true. If you're not supposed to panic, why are they calling it a panic -demic? You mean pandemic? No, Andy. That's a lunch meat. Okay, listen, either way, I think you're overreacting. How so? <coughs> yeah, we're supposed to take precautions, but we're supposed to remain calm. <coughs> <coughs> now, Carl, those are allergies. I'm not sick. Don't. Put it down. <sighs> listen, I don't want you taking this too far. <coughs> what were you saying? Nothing. Listen, Andy, if you read what I read this morning, you'd be scared too. What did you read? I mean, what one-sided, unreliable source did you read from this morning, Carl? It's called the Bible. Oh, I didn't mean... Oh, I bet you didn't. James 4, 8. Wash your hands, you sinners. Carl, that's, that's not... <laughs> you ain't doing this again. There isn't no special meaning, no gray area. It says as pure as day. Wash your hands, you sinners. From now on, this is all I'm doing. If I'm not constantly washing my hands and staying clean, <laughs> I'm not obeying God. Carl, I'd hate to bust your nonsensical bubble right now, but that passage is way more deeper than that. You're telling me I'm taking this out of context? Yes, absolutely. See, Carl, this passage has nothing to do with washing our physical hands. All it's about is pursuing God and God alone. It's about turning away from our sinful desires and only pursuing Him. <laughs> wow, I guess context is super important. Yep. I guess that means I never have to wash my hands again. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. You still need to wash your hands and be a decent human being. I think I heard you loud and clear. <coughs> Please don't. Thank you, Andy. Everything that you do, it's so special. Every single bit, all your knowledge of scripture, it's the best. <laughs> I love it. I love you. I love everything about you. You are truly an amazing man. And there's nothing that I wouldn't do to protect you. I'm gonna protect you from everything. This virus, it doesn't have anything on us. We can defeat it together. All right? <laughs> All right. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed washing my face afterwards. Uh, it is a crazy world right now and Sunday Cool actually has a couple announcements that we would like to share with you. But instead of me boring you with those details, I think it'd be a lot more fun and enjoyable if we all just watched Carl dance to them. So here you go. about everything. You know, this does seem like a good time to wash up those hands and grab a snack. Community Youth Live starts in five minutes and the countdown starts now.
and windy out here, so I will be really brief. You probably recognize that building behind me, right? It's the church. We all recognize the church. We recognize this room too, right? It's the church. But guess what? This might be the church building, but you and I are the church. We are the people of God out doing what we do, loving each other. And tonight, we still get to gather together as the church and encourage each other. Hey, we are so excited that you have joined us tonight for Community Youth Live, and we can't wait to get going. Hey, hey Cassie, go on. I got it. Hey everyone, welcome to Community Youth Live. I'm Cassie, your middle school youth group leader. Way out. Well, hey, that was a great catch, Cassie. Thank you. And I'm Lexi, I am the youth pastor here at Community. Wow, this has been a crazy week. I mean, who knew one week ago that we would end up being televangelists on TV and everything. Amazing, yeah. but I am so happy to be here with you. I am so happy to be here with our production team here in our studio, and I am so happy you all have tuned in here with us tonight. Yeah, me too. I just wish everybody could be here with us. It was so quiet earlier today while we were eating pizza. Ugh, are you talking about that cheesy, warm, gooey, delicious pizza yes. that we had earlier? Yes. It was so good. Hey, I have an idea. Okay. We should send some fresh pizza to someone's house right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, here's what we did. We went on Insta just a little while ago and we looked at everyone who made comments on our post this past week. We put those names into a name picker and it turns out Molly Moore, we're gonna be sending a pizza to your house tonight. So watch for a text message from your youth leader here in just a few moments, and we're gonna coordinate the details of getting that pizza to your house. Congratulations, Molly. Isn't Congratulations, that awesome? yes. Ooh. All right. That was fun. We should do that again sometime. Hey guys, everyone who leaves a comment in our chat section will be entered in their name in a drawing to, for a prize later in the show. Be sure to use your real name and say hi so that we know you're there. We have several really great prizes, and it is important to use your real name in that chat feed. You know what else they could do? They could say happy birthday to Ava. Happy Ava's birthday, birthday Ava. Happy birthday. So we have a special birthday gift coming to your house. It is in the mail as we speak, so hopefully it will arrive by tomorrow. That was so much fun. You know what I think we should do now? What? Let's play a game. I'm going to go get ready for it. Okay, cool. Okay. Ava and Capri stop by to be contestants on our show. Um, guess that peep. Let's check out and see what happened. So today we're going to play a game called Guess That Peep. And we're going to have a winner here, and then we'll have a winner at home. For our winners here, we've got a salty and lit community youth water bottle based on Matthew 5. And then second place is going to go home with a $5 Amazon gift card. For you guys at home, all you have to do is put a note in the chat box saying who you think is, is going to win. So it's either Ava for the high schoolers or it's Capri for the middle schoolers. Yeah, give it up. So put your comment, put your guess in the chat box. Now, for the ladies here, here's what they're going to do. We're going to give them some peeps to test. And they will taste a peep. They will quickly write down what flavor they think it is, their best guess. And whoever gets it right gets a point. Or if they both get it right, whoever wrote down the right answer first gets that point. So let's get started. You ready? Okay. Go ahead and cover up your eyes. And I'm going to grab your first peep flavor. Peep in front of you. Oh, okay. Where is it? Ready? Set. Taste it. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's, it's birthday cake. Okay, what, you, what is your guess, Ava? Is that something? Lemon. lemon. Yeah. Lemon, and then, guess, two oh, I've opened cake. up my eyes. You guys are 
were both wrong. No points. That was raspberry delight. Raspberry oh. delight was the first I like key flavor. The oh man. Right okay. Here, ready? ready? Set. Go. Is that flavor? a blueberry guess. Guess what? You are both wrong. It is just a regular peach. There is no well, I don't know. I, I, I'm like, there's no flavor to this. So I don't know. She ate head off. Okay, I'm <laughs> set. Taste it. Oh, wait. What is this? Oh, how? into our name picker and we will announce that winner here in just a few minutes. In the meantime, Capri, congratulations. You get to take home our salty and lit water bottle. And then Ava, $5 to Amazon. We'll see you back at the news desk, everyone. I brought you a party peep for your hot chocolate Thank and your you. Team World Vision mug. So that was so much fun. You know, I thought while we're trying to figure out who the winner is for our online giveaway, that we should share some of our favorite memes from the week. And I have some really good memes. I think mine are better than yours. Me too. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. <laughs> so here's the first one. So I love Where's Waldo. I, I love trying to pick him out of a crowd. And I saw this image online this week and I laughed out loud. Waldo is not very hard to find anymore <laughs> thanks to social distancing. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. Okay, so let's see one of yours. Okay, so Which mine you is a chipmunk. <laughs> I feel like we all do this. <laughs> we 
do. But this is you and me when we're like prepping dinner for youth group. We're always like in the kitchen eating food ahead of time. And then we're like, oh yeah. Let's we, pray. We should pray first. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Okay. So you know how pastors are used to preaching to sanctuaries that are mostly full. Yes. So we found this this past few weeks we found ourselves in kind of an odd situation where the sanctuaries are empty. And some of my youth pastor friends decided they wanted to do something about it. And so they gathered up like all the stuffed animals and all of the uh, Disney characters that they could find around their offices mm -hmm. and in the nursery. And they started putting them in the pews. <laughs> Take a look at this. So their pastors aren't preaching to an empty sanctuary right. anymore. There's one more image. Can you guys put up the other one that I got? Is this one is my, my favorite. Take a look at that. You're no dummy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Reach it. I <laughs> love that one. So good. Okay, I know you have one more. What's your last one? Okay, so we all know Jake from State Farm, right? Yeah, I know Jake. So what is he wearing? A hazmat suit. A hazmat suit. <laughs> oh, that was so good. That one was pretty funny. I don't know. I don't know. I, we might be a tie. <laughs> or you might have taken it with Jake with State Farm. I, I mean... It's a pretty good one. So good news is so. that we do have the winner of our online giveaway, and it is Zachary Quick. You are getting a $5 gift certificate Woo! to Amazon. Woohoo! Way to go, Zachary. So your youth leader is going to be texting you here in just a minute, um, and we'll try to get that gift certificate over to you so you can spend it on Amazon. All right, so I think it's just about time for our message for this evening, so I'm going to go get ready. Okay. Tonight, our message is coming from 1 Kings 19. Now, let's hear a few thoughts on the subject from Damien Easter before Pastor Lexi dives into Scripture. You know how there are always a ton of road signs, you know, like stop, sharp turn ahead. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing if those signs were there throughout our lives? I mean, especially in the moments when you find yourself just wanting a sign. But it's interesting because scripture never tells us that God will directly give us the next steps when we are facing confusion. But here's the thing. You look at people's lives like Esther and Elijah, and you see that sometimes you need godly people around you to help you figure things out. So. How do you figure out what God wants you to do when you don't know what's next? You get a support system because godly people can help you with your question. Hey guys, I thought we'd pop down to the fish tank so we have a familiar setting for our message this evening. You know, I spent a little time this week Googling road signs and some signs were really clear about what they meant. For example, this one. But then others weren't quite so clear, like this one, or perhaps this one. And before you even ask the question, yes, this is a real road sign. They have them up in the Alaska mountains on the curves to get people's attention. I sure hope there aren't man-eating mosquitoes around that bend. Crazy though, right? You know, I thought this week, isn't that what life is sometimes like sometimes the signs are clear about where to go next and then other times we find ourselves asking God what are we supposed to do what's the next step and those doubts and questions can leave us feeling a little lost and sometimes confused and isolated wishing that we had a good sign to point us in the right direction right have you ever felt like that well, for the past, past few weeks in youth group, we've been talking about what to do when we have doubts and questions about God. And this week, we're going to go ahead and wrap up that conversation by talking about what to do when we're questioning what God wants us to do. I'm curious, though, tonight, how many people in this group can see the future? Can you tell the future? Raise your hand just right where you are if you know the, que the answers to these questions. Number one, where will you go to college? What will your major be? Are you going to graduate? How about this? What job will you have after graduation? Or who are you going to marry? Uh, where are you going to retire? 
You see, we all have hopes and we have goals for these kinds of questions, but none of us know for sure right now, right? Unless you believe somehow that you have the ability to see into the future, the direction of your life and my life is largely unknown. And that can be just a little bit scary for us, right? Let's be honest about that. It's scary, guys. It can be. What if you make the wrong decision? How do you figure out where God might be leading you? Ah, right? So let's take a look at someone in the Bible this evening who had some difficult decisions of his own to make. We're going to pick up in 1 Kings chapter 19. And at this part of the story, Elijah had just called down fire from heaven and burn up everything at the altar. And you would think that he'd be pretty confident. But in the very next chapter, we go from 18 into 19, we see something different. You see, Jezebel learned that Elijah had killed all the prophets with a sword. And so she sent a message to Elijah saying that he was going to lose his life for what he had just done. So he panics. I would be panicking too, but he panicked big time. And he ran for his life, scripture says. In verse 4, it says, he came to a broom bush. He sat down under it and he prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the bush and he took a little nap. And then after he got a nap in, an angel of the Lord actually appeared to him and he brought some food and Elijah ate and that gave him the energy that he needed to travel for 40 days and 40 nights. That must have been some really good energy, full food that he ate there from the angel. Then he spent the night in a cave at the mountain of God, and the God spoke to him. And God asked, what are you doing here, Elijah? Then God says, go back, go back from the way you came. Now note, Elijah just spent 40 days and 40 nights traveling. God wakes him up in the middle of the night and he says, Go back from where you came. <laughs> That's a long journey to make after you just travel 40 days to get to the mountain of God. In verse 15 through 17, though, God says, When you get there, anoint Hazael keen over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, keen over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Maloha, to succeed you as a prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. You see, kind of at face value, God's instructions for Elijah might seem irrelevant, or maybe they're boring details in this story, but they're really important. I want you to take notes of these details. You see, God told Elijah to get connected with a support system, a group of people who could help him, help him serve the Israelite people and help protect him too. Even though Elijah had been comforted by God directly, he had a close and personal conversation with God himself. God knew that Elijah needed other godly people to help him carry on. You see, when we're experiencing confusion, uncertainty, or fear, it's easy to question what we're supposed to do next and why God would put us into this difficult situation. We question why God isn't making our path clear. But scripture never promises that God's going to make our path completely clear. It just doesn't. You see, the story of Elijah shows us that we need godly people in our lives to help us figure things out. So how do we make decisions when we're not sure what God would want us to do next? We pray, of course, and then we get a support system around us because godly people can help us with our questions. You know, there used to be this famous TV show that I watched all the time called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? One of the cool things about this show is that you got these lifelines and one of the lifelines was phone a friend. 
and you always had a variety of different people on your phone a friend list. So usually you had like a history buff or someone who was really good at pop culture or maybe a sports fan. So as you think tonight, maybe think a little bit about the different categories of people that you might want on your phone a friend list for life. Who are those people that you can go to when you're wrestling with these life issues and wrestling down your relationship with God who can give you support and give you some encouragement and give you some advice? In D group tonight for high schoolers and then Wednesday for middle schoolers, we want you to share some of those people. Be thinking of those names. And then as we close out this series today, I hope the main things that you take away from this series are, number one, that you don't have to be afraid of your doubts or questions because God can handle them. I promise you, he can. You're not the first person to ever have a doubt or a question. And then secondly, it's that you feel safe, safe enough to voice your questions with your peers and with your leaders, and that you would identify a few people who you can trust and you can talk things through with. It's so important, we all need it. Elijah, the prophet needed it, we need it too. When you have a question or a doubt that you need to process, I hope you know that we love you and we are always here for you. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for offering us people in our lives who can support us as we try to walk after what you have planned for us. Guide us this week. Let us take courage in you. The world is crazy right now, God, but you are the one known factor. You're the one who is there for us no matter what is going on. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, so I want you to just take a moment and kind of be still and spend a little time with God. We're going to play a short video before we check back in with our news desk. And if you'd like, while this video plays, I'd encourage you to grab a piece of paper, maybe a pen or a pencil, and start thinking about people who might be on your phone friend list. Think about who's your cheerleader, who's your counselor. Who is your coach, your confidant? Who is your prayer support for your life? Do that right now and we'll see you in a minute. In the quiet silence, there is an eternal conversation between creator and creation. But we can hardly hear. It's the violence of sound, the breakneck speed of things. Has noise become our only defense? But we are drawn by a whisper that we might hear and retune the senses as he waits. Waits, waits for our response. Wow, that was a crazy story. If I were Elijah, I'd be scared too. Uh, I would too. And man, that story has some crazy names in it. I think I just completely butchered those names, so sorry. But what I think we can learn from this story is that God has specific people that he has put in our lives that we can look to for help and guidance when things get difficult. Hey, so our team is going to be drawing another prize because, you know, I don't know about you, Cass, but I'm starting to get hungry again. And I think either pizza or maybe some dessert sounds really delicious. So we are going to send another pizza or a dessert, whatever you choose, out to another winner this evening. 
Um, so I am just waiting for a message to come in from our leaders to tell us who got picked for our final giveaway of the night. But before that, why don't we do a few announcements? Okay. All right. Sounds good. So we would like you guys to participate this week on Instagram. And Cassie will tell you a little bit about that. Okay. Um, I think it's time to say our goodbyes. Hop on Instagram this week. Most Post some pictures um, of what's keeping you busy during the week um, or email. Um, we'll show some pictures during the week um, next time. Yeah, so if you're not on social media, it's totally fine. Just shoot me an email with pictures of what's keeping you busy, what you're having fun with this week, and we'll include them in our live feed next week. That'll be a lot of fun. Yes. Um, for our high schoolers out there, we are hopping on Zoom 10 minutes after our live feed ends tonight. So be sure to check your text messages or check your email. I sent it to both places so you know the link to hop on to Zoom. Uh, I just got a text message from Rodney and Quinn is actually our winner for tonight. So Quinn, congratulations. You get to choose a dessert or a pizza to be sent out to you tonight so you won't be hungry for the evening. What fun that is. So high schoolers, I'm going to see you in about 10 minutes. And middle schoolers, um, I'll see you Wednesday night at 6.15 on Zoom. All right. We want to say a special thanks to our production manager, Nathan Lang, tonight. Of course, our projection supervisor, Aiden Hall. Quinn has been our quality control person this evening, monitoring everything that's going out to you guys. And then, of course, Ava and Capri, you are good sports this evening. Happy birthday to you, Ava. Thanks for joining Community Youth Live. We hope to see you back next Sunday. Until then, enjoy this commercial. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.